Hi, this is PD at Bergsorg Arcade at bergsorgarcade.com and this is tutorial 118. Uh, we're just going to continue on with our last tutorial and we're going to add the scroll view to our little loop window. So I'll open up Unity, open up Model Develop, and I'm going to scroll down to our loop window function. And this is where I'm going to add my scroll view. But before you do that, you're going to have to come up to the top and create a new vector 2. And this vector 2 is going to hold the position of that little slider at the bottom and at the right. So we'll come up, we'll create a private vector 2. And I'm just going to call this loot window slider. And I'm just going to start that off equaling a vector 2.0. So it starts off the zero values. So we'll come back down to our loot window function and let's start on our sliders. So we'll just call the slider loot window slider. And what we're going to do is assign the value that's returned back from our scroll view. And this allows us to keep track of you know where that scroll where that the little sliders at the bottom and right are supposed to be. So we'll create a GUI dot begin scroll view. So the first thing it wants is a rec. So I'm just going to create a new rec. And of course, just like all the other recs, it wants to know, you know how far from the left, from the top, and how wide, how high it's supposed to be. Now this rec here is actually going to be uh, what you see on the screen. So from the left, I'm just going to put some hard values in here for uh, the display that I want. And I want it to be 5 pixels from the left. Now keep in mind that this, this scroll view is inside of that window. So wherever the window is on your screen, this, this uh, scroll view starts 5 pixels from well the inside of that window. So now we want to know how far from the top. And again, you know, these values are going to fluctuate according to, you know, the graphics you're using and the style that you uh, want it to look like. But for me, I know, already know it's 15 pixels. Now the width, well, I know I want the width to be uh, the width of the actual loop window minus uh, 5 pixels from the left and minus 5 pixels from the right. Since since it's inside of that loop window, I know I can actually just get the value of the rect of that loot window. So I'm just going to call the loot window rec dot width, which of course returns the, the width of that loot window. And I'm just going to minus 10 from it, 10 being the little tiny offset that I'm using here multiplied by 2. And now it wants to know how high this is supposed to be. And again, it's going to fluctuate according to the graphics you want since I have my button set to be 40. Uh, tall, uh, I already know that mine need to be 70. And as we change our graphics, we'll probably end up adding variables for these, but for now, I just want to get the thing up and running. Just get it looking right. So the next thing it wants to know is the scroll position of these of the sliders. Uh, since we're storing them out here, we can just copy them. So just put that variable in there. Now the next one, if you notice, it says uh, it wants another rect. And it's a, a rect view. So I'm going to make a new rect. And what this rect is, is how big a, a space can you scroll around inside of? So this first rect will say, you know, we have uh, this small space inside of our window that we can actually view. But this second rect is, could be much larger than that original one. And we access the rest of the area in that rect by using the little sliders. So I want this rect to start at 0, 0, so 0 offset from the left, 0 from the top. And as far as how wide it's going to be, uh, since right now I'm just doing a complete uh, horizontal one, I'm going to want to call the loot items dot count, and I'm just going to multiply that by my button size. And the button size we just call the button width. So my window, in reality, even though it will expand past my actual viewable area, 
is actually going to be depending on how many items I have. So if I have 40 items, it's actually you know 40 items times 40 pixels. And the last one it wants to know is our height. And for our height, I am just going to use our button height plus the offset. And that's done. So we'll close that off. And right after the for loop, if you notice up here, it was a begin scroll view. Now, every GUI element that I see that has a begin in front of it also requires an end. So we're just going to come down. I'll put a little bit, little space after the for loop. And I'm just going to say GUI dot end scroll view. We'll close that up. I'll put my parentheses and we'll save it off and check it out in Unity. So I have no error, so I'm going to start it up. And there we go. We now have the little scroll bar, but my buttons aren't exactly down as far as I want them. So I'm going to go in and do a little bit of a tweak on that. So I'll head over to Mono Develop, and I'm just going to adjust the height of my buttons where they start. And I'm just going to move them down. Oh, let's do a whole offset. And we'll make sure that we have everything over here. Oh, this was supposed to be button height. And I'm also going to move them over just a little bit from the left. And I'm just going to move them over by five pixels. And I'm going to encase this in parentheses. So when it's calculating the buttons, it's going to add five pixels to the left then the width of the button times how many buttons we have. So we'll come back in Unity. No error, so we'll start that up. And there we go. That's kind of how I want it to look. And if we notice, it's a little off to the side. Uh, as far as the spacing between my buttons go, I'm going to take care of that with my actual graphics by leaving a little bit of uh, space at the edge of my graphics. Now it looks like I need to add a little bit of room here at the end because it's not uh, quite covering the end here. So I'll just quickly go back into Mono Develop again. And that has to do with the actual scroll view. So I'm going to come over here and right here is the width of it. So I'm going to keep what's there, but I'm just going to add a little bit to it. So we'll take the number of items we have, multiply by the button width, and then I'm just going to add the offset. And that's because I'm adding five pixels at the start. And I also want to add five pixels at the end. So that's like a full offset where this is basically a half offset. So we can actually replace this with offset. And I don't want to do division. Multiplication is a little bit simpler for the computer, so I'll just multiply it by 0.5. So let's go take a look at that. That should pretty much place everything where I want it to as far as the items go. And there we go. We scroll all the way over. We have a little bit of buffer at the end, which should be the exact same as what we have over here. Now the last thing I want to add, since we have a bit of time left, is the little close button up here. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop, and what the close button does is, well, it closes the, the window. So I'll come up here, and I'm going to create a private variable. It will be of type bool, and I'm just going to say display, and my underscore, display loot window. And for now, I'm just going to start that off as true. I actually like it under my list. And then in my on GUI, I'm going to check to see what the value of that variable is. So if display loop window, so if it's set to true, then we'll display. Now I'm going to come down here and just actually create a button that will turn it off. So if 
gui.button and by now we should have this on automatic <laughs> so we're going to create a new rect and that rect is going to be well I'm going to put it in the top right corner and I'm going to make it probably around oh I don't know 20 by 20 so since I already know how big this rect or how big the window is I can actually just go get its rect which is the loop window rect and I'm just going to minus 20 from it and as far as from the top I'm going to place it directly on the top and then we can actually create a close button up here so public float close button uh, these are going to be used also on different windows that we have so we might as well define the actual size up here so I'm making mine well, this is going to be the width 20 pixels wide and then public float close button height which will also be 20 pixels so I'll come down here and just put those variables in so close button width and close button height and for now I'm just going to display an X for it and when it's pressed I'm just going to turn the display loop window and we'll make it equal to false and I'm missing something up here I'm probably missing yes this here so we'll save that off we'll go back to unity make sure there's no errors and we do have an error so cannot be appended to the type you engineer. okay so what did I do wrong here I'm um, actually after the width property here there we go that should get rid of all the errors and let's start it up and there we go now I'm obviously going to want to play around with this and position it but depending on the, again the graphics you're using uh, you just move it to where you want it to and when you close it it closes the actual window now it looks like we're already over 12 minutes here so I'm gonna save this one off and uh, well, we'll start another one a little later on I'll see you then. Bye-bye.